thanks for coming here in the court on the street. I am your <laughs> horse host, Vince, and he is happy with being himself. He loves his flaws. He owns his quirks, and he is just as perfect as anyone else, exactly as he is. He's Ariana Grande. Oh, wait. Nope. It's your quirk host, Josh. <laughs> All I can think about when you just said that. He's Ariana Grande was the (laughs) Pikachu! (laughs) It's Pikachu! (laughs) I just pictured that that picture of and it just has like an outline of an outline of a big ponytail coming off the top of the head. No, it's an outline of me, and then somebody guesses Ariana Grande. Yeah. Uh (laughs) That would be how it goes. Yeah. That would be too good. Um I start trying to come up with these by searching for when there's an obscure word, I just search for a quote mm. with the word. Yeah. And um, yeah, Ariana Grande came up. It was too good to pass up. Yeah, it does. But um, that sounds pretty good. I don't blame you for using that one. That was that was quite good. So, Ari, um, what's a fun fact? Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm actually prepared this week. Hey. So fun fact, a, a crocodile cannot stick its tongue out. That tracks. Yeah. Who would have known? I didn't know that. Well, they, they detect when to close their mouth based on how it touches their tongue, right? So if their tongue uh-huh. was stuck out, then they could chomp down and chop off their tongue. So yeah. that's no good. I mean, yeah, not ideal. Not ideal at all. No, yep. that and uh, pigs, pigs can't look up at the sky. It's physically impossible, apparently. I also knew that. Yeah, you would know these things. I know I Mr. would. Mr. Random Man. You got to bring funner facts. You got to know I, less stuff. I am... I am gonna. I am judging you based on this completely arbitrary thing that I've hoisted upon you. You're judging me based on the random facts that you already know because you are a random yep. fact hoarder. Yep, that's me. <laughs> and me and Josh are a uh, court on the street. Um, every week, we take a look at the 28 words generated from the puzzle word game Quirtle, which you can see if you head over to our Twitter, hopefully, and. We pick one of them and talk about whatever the hell we can based on those. Uh, This week, our words are coming from July 17th through July 23rd. And with that explanation, Josh goes first this week. Yep. I have to go first. It's always like dreaded because we're like, I don't want to go first. But then once we start talking, I'm like, oh, I'm glad I went first. (laughs) Well, first has a lot of pressure on it to like not start off go strong. too long. Yeah, start off strong, not go too long, or else the second person's gonna <laughs> feel like they have to go over three hours. Yeah. So this week's yeah bunch of words was was interesting because I felt like there was a lot of duplicates from previous groupings, and I'm like, I they don't want, I don't want to do any of those that I've seen before, and I don't want to do anything that ties into another topic that we've already really talked about. So I decided to go with Sigma, which uh, is the 18th letter of the Greek alphabet. And it made me think about Greek mythology. Before you go into it, I counted four duplicates. Like Begin was literally a duplicate in the week. And then Quirk and Ninja. Oh, no, I guess there were three. Okay. Oh, no. Well, we've had Ozone before. We've had Ninja before. Oh, yeah. Huh. We've had quiet before we had music before we've had music before we had video before mm-hmm. uh we've had quirk yeah. obviously before there were a lot there was just a bunch uh so weird yeah so i wanted to get something a little bit different i, I do think it's quite funny that uh, i chose sigma as my word to use when godly was available <laughs> And I definitely could have talked is, about the yeah. same thing, but uh, you uh, know, yeah, you could have you could have expanded the pantheon. So what's what's your favorite? It's Roman gods and Celtic gods, and you know, uh, uh, we decided hey. to stick in one path, the most well known one. All right, so yeah, I figured we we do a little little talking about Greek mythology, but I thought it'd be cool for us yep. to start out by taking a test to oh, see gosh. how well we know our Greek mythology just off the bat. I took a course on Greek mythology in college. Well, then I'm expecting you to ace this or you're going to fucking ace it. You're a failure if you don't. But, you know, you're Thank still, you, still my friend. Professor so. Woodward. All right. I'm going to I'm going to oh, sh- stream my screen with you. OK. Oh, while we're on while we're over here on Discord. um. 
that's what I had written for my introduction. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, just wrote horse noises. Yeah. Just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's wonderful. Okay, so you can see this. We have. All righty, so let's get into start this quiz. Let's go. Which Greek hero was called the Tamer of Horses? Hector. Yep. So we're going to, gives us 10 seconds to answer these. So we got to go quick because I think it's, it'll show the answer otherwise. All right. Um, In Greek mythology, who flew close to the sun? Icarus. Uh, that was easy. Icarus. Who is the chief god of the ancient Greeks? Minerva. No, it's Zeus. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I know I gotcha. you know that's wrong. Gotcha. Who is the Greek goddess of the rainbow? Oh, Iris. Correct. It's because I just didn't how many think gods any of the other ones. are on Mount Olympus? Uh, I don't know. Four hundred. Twelve. Fuck. <laughs> don't worry. That's I knew not that enough. One. I knew that one. It makes more sense if you know about like all the different lineage and like how the first five and then the next twelve, our next seven make up the beginning twelve. Mm. What is the name of the Greek goddess of Earth? Gaia. Nope. That is correct. Who in Greek legend designed the labyrinth of King Minos? Perseus. Mm. Fuck. Daedalus. Yep, Daedalus. The death of which Greek legend is celebrated as a Spartan festival? Hyacinthus. This is correct. I did not know I that just, one. I just guessed it based on the, the fact that hy hyacinths are flowers. Yeah, that's true. I don't I, know. I, I, well, I knew who Selene was, but I, I, the other two I could have could have been tricked with. In Greek mythology, how many heads did the monster Typhoon have? Typhoon. I don't know. 50? Fuck it. Why yeah. not? 100. Gotcha. I fooled you. Which Greek goddess is known as the goddess of chance? T Tyche? Yes, sir. I don't know why. It just sounded right based on the base. <laughs> what is Themis the god of? Uh, po po Poetry. Nope. nope. Wisdom and good counsel. Obviously. What did Greek goddess... Thalia carry in her hand. Maskin's shepherd staff. This is correct. I have no, that was a guess. <laughs> in the Iliad, who are the custodians of the gates of Olympus? Hippoflef, Hippolyst, Hippolyst, nope. Hora. Hora. Apparently. I thought they said Hera. No. In Greek mythology, who shaped and formed dreams? Uh, Morpheus? Yep. Cool. The name of which Greek goddess means youth and in the prime of life? Hebe. Or Hestia. I don't know. Hebe. Hebe. Hebe? Hebe? Which Greek goddess is considered the queen of gods? Hera. That one was easy. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Who was transformed into the laurel tree in the Greek mythology? Etna? No. This one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> that one I knew. I didn't know Ephi. that one. What is the other name for Theum Temple? Don't know. Hephaestus. Yep. Got it right. Yep. Correct, Amundo. For how long did the Trojan War last? Fifteen years. Eh, ten. <laughs> I guess I haven't. I guess I haven't watched Troy. Yeah. Lately. What is the staff carried by Hermans called? Cod Codicus. Codicus. Yep. C Caduceus. Hermes. Caduceus. Caduceus. Yeah. How many heads does Cerberus Three. the guard? Yep. Who You're fell tall. in love with his reflection? Narcissus. Correct. Amundo. What was Athena's sacred bird? Owl. Correct. These are easy. Name the Egyptian king who was the son of Poseidon. Egyptian king? What? Yep. I believe it's this. I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Osiris. Osiris. What was the final resting place for the souls of the heroes in Greek mythology? Elysium. Correct. Thank you, Hades. <laughs> right? Who is the Greek god of love? Eros. Yep. Speaking of Eros, I don't know if you know this, but there's there's two different like there's Eros the original who is mm -hmm. not the god I love and then there's a second Eros that comes later in the timeline and that's this one it's Whoa. also known also known as Cupid in Roman mythology yeah okay so I thought that was kind of interesting I yeah loved. Roman Roman mythology is really like just change it enough that they the teacher doesn't think that we copied your homework yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much like that's what Roman mythology is compared to Greek. Yeah. Which annual women's festival was widely celebrated in ancient Greece? Amphidromia? Thesmophoria. I would have not known that one, that's for sure. Okay. Who built the Trojan horse? I think this, but I could be wrong. 
Um, just sure. Go ahead. Oh, I have no clue. You were right. Epheus. Let's see. Who is the Greek goddess of memory? Um, Mnemosyne. Yep, Mnemosyne. It's where the word mnemonic comes from. E. Which of these in Greek mythology is the god of sea, earthquakes, and horses? Poseidon. Yep, easy enough. In Greek mythology, which titan was condemned to holding up the sky for eternity? Atlas. Thank you, God of War. <laughs> I knew that one even without God of War. <laughs> so did I, but that's the first thing I think of. Yeah. That was such a pivotal scene in it when you're climbing up. Also, I don't even think Helios is a titan. No, he's not. Could be wrong about that. Who knows? I don't Next. believe he is. In... in ugh. Which ancient Greek festival is held in honor of Poseidon? I don't know. The Isthmian Games, I'm going to say. This is correct. Who is the mother and wife of Uranus? <laughs> Uranus. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Gaia? Yeah, it's Gaia. Fucking Gaia is the mother of everything, apparently. Yeah. Who rescues uh, Odysseus from drowning? Never read the Iliad. Uh, Panacea. Oh. Nope. Lucothia. Lucothia. Who led an army of Amazons to Troy? Amazons? Oh, yep. man, that threw me off. Um, Ajax. Nope. Oh, and Thessalia. Yeah, this this all threw me off because Agamemnon was the king that led the army against Troy. Troy. Ajax was his general. Yeah. So yep. it all threw me off. Um, I don't even know how to say that. Neo- Hymen. <laughs> no. Ne- Neo Petelmus. <laughs> Neo Neoptal. Neoptilus? Yeah, yeah. Neoptilus? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Those PTs get us. Yeah. <laughs> Who ferries the souls of the deceased? Karen. Karen. Yep. Who daggered Hector's body? Who dragged? Yeah, daggered. Who dragged Achilles. Hector? Yep. Yeah, he was a fucking. Who is the Greek brutal. god of medicine? I don't know. I think him. Yeah. Asclepius? Asclepius. He is sleepy. <laughs> he said he makes him go to sleep that's medicine yeah he is sleepy yes who lured sailors with their enchanting music and sweet song siren yeah no no the sea goat damn it <laughs> in greek <laughs> mythology who could understand the language of animals um dr doolittle yeah right i don't know the calcius i don't know apparently you did melampus <laughs> yeah obviously in Homer's Odyssey, who are the cannibalistic giants? Hmm. Don't like that. The one that I don't know, the one with L. Lestrophagones. Yep. According to Greek mythology, who was cooked and served to the gods at a banquet? Pelops. That's a good guess, because I had no idea. It wasn't entirely a guess, it just sounded right. <laughs> Well, no, because like, you look I, like I, you could be cooked and served, <laughs> sir. No, like I know about these things. Like I took a, I took the course and I've listened to a lot of myths and legends podcasts. So like I, I know these things. There's some things that are that I do know that are just buried a little bit. Yeah. Well, I know you listen to a lot of the myths and legends stuff. So I thought that this would be a good. Uh, yeah. A good topic to just talk about. I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. Which sea monster has 12 feet and six heads? Cilia. Correct. Who was the foster mother of Zeus? Rhea. Eh. No? And I believe it's this, yeah. Um. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, Rhea is his sister and wife? No, that's... That's Hera. No, Rhea is Kronos's, Kronos's uh, wife. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So she hides Zeus with her in like a nymph village area to hide him from Cronus, if I remember correctly. Pretty sure that's what it is. Sounds about right. Who did Agmanon sacrifice to Artemis? I don't know. Who cares? Well, well yeah. Oh, Iphigen- wow. That- <laughs> Iphigenia. Iphigenia. <laughs> Agamemnon. Agamemnon. Yeah. If if a Jania. <laughs> like man, they really like just throwing some stuff together. She was a character in the movie, I believe. Really? I think so. I don't remember. Who did Demeter attempt to immortalize? Well, I don't know. Demophon? Yep. That yeah, was a guess though. So in Greek mythology, who was put into an eternal sleep by Zeus? Hephaestus? Probably not. Oh. No. Endymion. That makes sense. I should have known that one. Okay. What is the name of Adonis flower? Cr- Chrysan- the, the, the chrysanthemum. Oh. Obviously. The red, red anemone. Red anemone. Hmm. Which nymph was transformed into a spring by Artemis? Orphne? No. Arthus. Ar- Arthusa. Uh, pretty bad Arth- losing streak. Arthusa. <laughs> In Homer's Odyssey, who was the keeper of the winds in the islands of Aeolia? Aeolian. Aeolian. 
Yeah. Aeolus. Oh, Aeolus. that should have been. Yeah, okay. That should have made sense. sense. What magical object in Greek mythology brought ill fortune to anyone who possessed it? It's the necklace. Okay. That one I knew. <laughs> who helped Theseus escape the labyrinth? Gotta be Ariadne, right? Yeah, that one I didn't know, but I Ariadne knew it was a... is the is the woman that I believe Theseus kidnapped and later married. Hmm. Fun. Who cut off Philomena's tongue? I don't know. Uh, me neither. We're gonna go to too slow. Yeah, but also wrong. Curious. Obviously. Who killed Acus? Acus. 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 Estrape. 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 Nope. Holly Femus. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. In Greek mythology, which city was founded by Ninus? Nineveh. That is correct, sir. It's got the same letters. In Greek legend, who constructed an ark to protect humanity from the floods by Zeus? Argia. That was wrong, and it was... I it can't was see. wrong. Doesn't matter. Not, uh, not Noah. Few results. Our last one. Deucalion. Deucalion. <laughs> This okay. is really funny. A lot of these answers I should have known based on more modern, um, like sci-fi fantasy books. They love naming shit after Greek and Roman mythology. Huh. Well, so it looks like we're we're smack dab in the middle. <laughs> we got thirty-eight out of fifty-seven correct, and, but we're uh, way better than average. Yeah, way better than the average people's scores. So. That's nice to know. Hell yeah. Mm. Yeah, I thought that would be a fun little starter exercise to it get, was the, fun. get the juices flowing. Okay, so... It was a fun, quick 23 minutes. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it was a realize, long quiz. Don't realize how long it takes. Um, yeah. Okay, so do you have a favorite god? Mm, I don't know. Ooh, what you got, a little family tree here? Yeah, I'm going to link this in the um, podcast description when we put put it up, because I thought this was kind of cool, the way it uh, depicts how everything happens. So you have yep. Gaia. So uh, first comes Gaia, first comes Chaos, and then there's Gaia and two others, but they don't show them in this. They are... Um... Could you just search for titans because the, that's the generation before the olympians yeah um well no these ones are actually called the primordial gods oh is it like nyx in yeah it's nyx and i don't know if it'll work. this is a poster yeah I don't let you look at it it's terrible i don't know why why they do that stuff Just... i've i've started using duck duck go for images because you can still view the f- image duck, as duck, opposed go. to on google yeah Never used it before. Yeah, it's um, it's getting to be a better search engine than Google, like, period. Okay. It did. Fuck. <laughs> At least I heard it, but that doesn't mean that it's... No, I heard that too. <laughs> um... <laughs> We're good. We're you're good. Just, it's not recording. For it? It's not... Re- I mean, he had to test it real quick. Oh. It's not coming through on the recording, only oh. to you. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so uh, as you can see here, we have Chaos and then uh, Tartarus, Gaia. See, this is the original Eros I was talking about. Yeah. Erebus and then Nyx. Um, I forget what the the legend means. Oh, yeah. So lover relationship is red. Parent child is black lines in this. Man, it's just nuts. Yeah, dude. Just hor- I couldn't believe like I started like rewatching yep. some of this stuff and like looking into it and i'm like oh my nah. god the amount of messed oh, up yeah. family lineage and this is just unbelievable like how many just planets and land masses and inanimate objects did zeus fuck to create <laughs> new children everything every single zeus thing Zeus just put it in everywhere couldn't help it nope <laughs> have you seen um, have you seen the new thor movie I haven't. I want to go watch it, though. Okay. Russell Crowe's very good as Zeus in it. Nice. Yeah, so um, it starts out with chaos, and you get the four like primordial deities to start, and then Gaia births Pontos, Uranus, um, Aria, and Nessoi. And then I like how the picture for Nessoy is just an island. Just an island. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is like she. It's everything. Just, she just like created them like they weren't she wasn't yeah like they would didn't get impregnated by somebody and then give birth to them she just like created them well then she says you know what 
my son's kind of hot and decides to Fuck start him. having <laughs> decides to start having kids with Uranus. And then from there, um To be get, fair, every creation myth has to come down to that, right? Like you yeah. create one person, two people, like you gotta you gotta perpetuate somehow. Yeah. Fucking in the in the myth, Adam and Eve have two sons. Yep. How how did humanity survive after yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to think back on that stuff. <laughs> yeah, man. Nobody thinks one step further than they ought to. Yep. Yeah. So they they become lovers, and then they birth Oceanus, Hyperion, Aea, Phoebe, Cronus, Rhea, Iapetus, Cyrus, the Titans. Yep. All the Titans. Um. So I don't know how, how much you know about that. You know, like what happened. Story with Kronos and. Uranus. No. Funny enough, everything that I've ever looked at or heard about kind of skips these intermediate generations. I know. You that's hear about, why I, you I hear about at all Gaia, Eros, Nyx, and then you hear about Atlas and Kronos. Yep. And then the Olympians. But you don't really ever hear about Helios or Metis yep. or Themis. So they're all so intertwined, it's crazy. So Gaia and Uranus give birth to all of the Titans, right? Well, Ye- Uranus is scared um, that one of his children are going to take his power. Um, so he is uh, he eats all of his kids. He eats them. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Somebody had hamsters as pets. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um. And he also, they also give birth to three cyclopses and cyclopes. And then, uh, oh, why can't I remember what these things are called? Their name starts with an H. Um, they have 50 heads and 100 heartbeat. Uh, no, I don't know. Um, Not heartbeats. Uh, yeah, Huck, huh, head. you can do it. <laughs> Conquer trees. <laughs> Not whoa, not even close. Hecaton cherries. Hecaton cherries. Yeah. Hecaton cherries. So, Hecaton cherries. Yeah. We're going with Hecaton Tonka trucks. Yeah. Tonka yeah. trucks. Heck, heck and Tonka trucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're referred to from now on. So they gave birth to Heck and Tonka trucks. And uh, Uranus didn't like the Tonka trucks or the uh, Cyclopses. So he oh, banished yeah. how them. Can you, how can you fuck a Tonka truck? Yeah. Um, he banished them uh basically back into Gaia. Like just shoved Mana back up in there according to a the, the myth. Um reverse abortion? Yeah. So Gaia was not happy. So she fashions this giant sickle and tries to get one of her children uh to basically go after and dethrone Uranus. Well, the only one that's willing to do it is Cronus. So Cronus takes the sickle and cuts off Uranus's genitals. Why? Uh, because she was mad. Uh, that's what Guy told him to do, because she was mad that he was not accepting of his <laughs> of his children, even though they weren't and like the Titans. The Greeks were horny as fuck. Yeah. They were just like, hey, guess what? We can fuck everything. Like, yep. somebody's thinking about this story, right? Somebody's making this story up, and it's like, what's the worst thing that could happen to Uranus? Yeah. Was, no more get dick? His, get his junk cut off. No more dick, yeah. Write it down. And then, from there, it's kind of unsure. There's some people that think that one thing happened and something another, but the majority say that um, Aphrodite spawned from his genitalia falling into the sea so she rises from the sea um so yeah he defeats uranus and cronus basically becomes in charge he gets together with Rhea. they're married that's where everybody kind of starts to pick stuff up for the most part uh, yeah the- that's where the whole olympiad comes from yeah so they all come from cronus and Rhea. um which is really weird because zeus just look at Zeus's fucking relationship tree. All the red. All the red. <laughs> this man yeah. fucked everything. He yep. said, "You're a milf. You're a gilf. You're twelve. I don't care. You're you're my dilf. Yeah, Doesn't you're matter. My, you're my. Because who is Metis? Hold on. He's got a red line connecting to Metis. Metis. 
is Ma- that is that a is that a lady god? That's a lady god who is oh okay who is technically uh let's see so this would be parents grandparents Oceanus and Tethys is daughter yeah, so it would be like second cousin mm, yeah or, I guess technically first cousin right? first cousin yeah because aunt and uncle yeah first cousin yep. yeah but and like then, but like they give birth to Athena. Aunt- his aunt and uncle are also related, so maybe like three quartereth cousin. Yeah, and that that's where Athena comes from. Um, also, that hmm? kind of, we're kind of, yeah, we're kind of jumping around. Um, no, I like the other chart better, where it show it had a line specifically for sprung fully formed out of the head, because right? that's where Athena comes from. Yeah, yep. Athena Athena springs fully formed out of the head of Zeus. Yeah, did it have this? In here, uh, there's a line up at the yeah, see, dark red that dark red line, yeah, just bah, yep, yeah. Zeus is like, Zeus is like, hey, what's up? Fucking, there's Athena, bro, yeah. Well, so she doesn't like just spawn out of him, uh, he also has the same like fright of somebody taking his shit, so he eats her, he eats Metis, and then Makes sense, he, and then he doesn't feel well. And I forget which so he god. shits out Persephone. No, so he has I forget <laughs> which one of the gods, but he has one of the gods split his head open, and like that's where Athena comes from 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 his forehead being split open, and she comes out supposedly in full war armor and everything. Yeah, man, these are this is this is a fucking comic book, yeah, dude. It really is. I mean, I mean, it's just crazy. Yep. Um, wacky um okay so back to the original question before we got caught up in the actual family tree of it right yeah who is favorite greek god are we counting this whole tree yes okay so not just the olympians correct everything um, everything that's on the, the tree i think for it's anybody easy listening for me we'll be putting this in the, the description for you to look at yeah um I think it's Prometheus. Okay. I don't know, something about something about the the whole myth of Prometheus is really incredible to me like the the selflessness and then the just unimaginable unimaginable punishment. Yeah. Well, and you know he has like a twin brother. Um I didn't, but Yeah. Epimetheus. Okay. Epimetheus. One, one is a uh, foresight and one is um future sight, I believe or what? I shall look it up. One one is the opposite of the other. Epimetheus means hindsight, literally hindsight. after yep. thinker. Yeah. Um, he is the brother of Prometheus, traditionally interpreted as foresight. So yeah. Yeah. Um, Epimetheus, I guess, is the god of the past. Prometheus is the god of, of the, the future. future. Yep. Yeah. There's just, I don't know. There's lots of cool stuff. But yeah, that makes sense. Prometheus is definitely cool. Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't know. I'm torn. There's so many cool, so many cool gods that like follow. Um, I don't know. I probably Ares for me. Yeah. He's just just depicted so cool and like he's the he's not like the good like you hear like god of war, but he wasn't like the good part of war. <laughs> not that there's like a real good yeah. part of war, but he was like he epitomized like all of the bad bloodshed out there. And like I feel like that kind of goes against almost what every other god is. Even Hades, like he is the god of the underworld, but he's also considered to be like one of the gods of fertility. So Yeah. Huh. I I like the fact that Ares is just like the badass. Um that is until Kratos comes along. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Goddess, uh, the the Greek god of war, bloodlust, and courage. Yeah, like he's just going at it. Yeah, no holds barred. Yeah, man, it's wild. Is there a, a god that you dislike the most? One that you just are not a fan of? I not really. Like I, I don't really. Doesn't really matter to me. Like I'm sure there is just some like wicked fucking douchey god or whatever but nah and i i mean they're all they're all kind of cool yeah i don't think there's any particular god that i just identify as someone that is just dumb or inherently bad yeah i mean i guess a lot of them are all pretty (laughs) yeah they're all inherently bad yeah (laughs) but they're all they're all so inherently good like yeah like that's the whole thing about this is you know why there were so many different temples and so many different ways of thinking about greek gods like each individual person revered and despised a different god so 
Yeah. Like there were things to be admired and despised about each and every one of them. Oh, fun fact that I just remembered. So Let's uh, go. Athena and Poseidon both were fighting over Athens, like who would get to be revered as its god. And they both gave like, the people something and Athena won. So that's why it's named after her. Apparently there was yeah. uh, quite mean, a... Wait, so you mean uh, po- Poseidon? Yeah, Poseidon. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the that's the Mandela effect uh universe that I'm from is the Poseidon universe. <laughs> there is no Poseidon where you're from? No, Poseidon one in the in the uh collapsed waveform that I'm from. Oh, so there is no yeah. there is no Athens. Just make me say more big words and you'll eventually give up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know who my least favorite is. Maybe, maybe that's what I'm saying. It's kind of silly Hermes? to have a least favorite. Maybe Hermes, Hermes is fucking cool as shit, though. I don't know. He fast as fuck, boy. Maybe I just dislike his costume and how he's depicted with his stupid little wings on his shoes and his helmet. They all got stupid shit. Yeah, but his is just like extra stupid. <laughs> You're gonna say that Hermes with his winged shoes are is worse than Pan. With his little flute. Oh no, Pan's terrible too. Yeah, okay. So I, it's a toss up between those two. Hey, what a coincidence! They're both down at the bottom right down here. <laughs> this is weird. It's this is a weird because like Dion, Samel, and Maya are included in this chart, but don't have pictures associated with them. Are they actually gods, or are they just people that Zeus fucked and made like uh, Olympians? Uh, I don't because if know. that's the case. Then they why might, isn't everybody that Zeus fucked and had a ch- child with? I think why isn't no. so? These ones that don't have pictures are mortals, I believe. So the the ones that come stem off of that are demi demigods. Yeah. So why isn't this list like way bigger? Why doesn't this have like um like Achilles? I don't know. That's and a good question. like let's see, whoever the one? hell else? Um, hmm, let's see. No, nope. This one has even less. Yeah, but like, odd. yeah, Achilles has. Achilles has some fucking cool like half sons and daughters. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of cool cool stuff. Apo- I really like Apollo too. I forgot to say yeah. that Apollo. Apollo's pretty cool. Yeah, goddess of art and music, and mm-hmm. would probably be my my favorite. Yeah. So, oh yeah, that's why I didn't say that. Um, I didn't. I picked. I forgot that I picked Hermes for my least favorite because uh-huh. Pan is my weirdest one. Fair enough. I was like, wait, why didn't I? I remembered yeah. my next question is, what is the weirdest god to you? And it's Pan. But by, by, by yeah, far. That makes sense. That does make a lot of sense. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to parrot you on that because I don't really know anything else. I mean, like, <laughs> like Hypnos is weird. God that just sleeps because that's what he's the god of. Yeah. Um, Tartarus. Yeah. Like, so Tartarus, Tartarus apparently isn't. Tartarus is a place. Yeah, Tartarus is a place. Yeah, but it's considered to be also a primordial deity because, like, that all spawned from chaos, and chaos was Mm. supposedly like nothing. So there's a lot of like pop culture that I'm sort of referring to in all of this, right? Because like I played a lot of Hades last year. Yeah, and I know Tartarus as the place that you fight through in order to get out of Hades. Like, yeah. Hades is the overall realm of the underworld that includes Tartarus, Elysium. So it's like it's it's all very weird and intertwined, especially when you consider apparently Tartarus is considered a child. Yeah, yeah there's just I don't know. There's so much weirdness that goes on in this clusterfuck yep. of, a, <laughs> of a family and, tree. I mean, I those mean, people had to figure out something. Um, like they don't list the other one here, but Aphrodite and Hermes have a child. No, isn't it? No, no. They become the same person. Uh, they they pray. They are in love. They pray to be as close as they possibly can, and so I believe it is Zeus combines them into the same person, and then they become Hermaphrodite uh, or Hermaphroditus. No, it was a son of Hermes and Aphrodite. But I mean that's the thing, is there's different different depictions of it, I guess. Yeah, I mean definitely the way that I learned it was that they got 
combined. I learned that uh, I learned that they had a child, and it was neither man nor woman. It was a mixture of both. Hmm. I don't know. That's the other thing is crazy. It's like depending on where you <laughs> where you get your fact from is gonna change stuff completely because there's just so many different yeah things. I don't know. I I've just always been intrigued by it. I, I honestly think that's part of the reason I like the God of War series so much. This is weird. I, I I distinctly remember being taught that in that course that I took in college, and this site literally says according to Ovid, which is the book that I read. Yeah. Maybe I just slept through that class, and then we were <laughs> on to the Celtic gods after that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how about you? What uh, what did you decide to go with this week? Oh, we're on to me already. Okay. Oh, we are on to you, quick. sir. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Um, I chose a ward. Ooh. A ward. Um, and I th- thought, well, Nicole helped me think of this, but I thought started thinking of like strange awards and things yeah. of the sort okay um so i started thinking like where i started actually was with the razzies right uh because they're sort of awards but sort of also not like the worst of awards is kind of where my mind started going and that's where i just ran with it so i'll uh go ahead and just start with sort of the things that I expect to go quickest and move on step by step into um, what I have deemed more and more interesting things. Also, a couple questions along the way. Okay, sounds good to me. Are you familiar with the award of Mr. Irrelevant? Nope. This is the person that was chosen last in the NFL draft. Oh, that's that's what it goes to? Yes. (laughs) That's quite funny, actually. It is very funny. Um, I thought it was interesting to to highlight because it's something that you basically don't earn. You just sort of fall into being like the last good choice, right? Has there been anybody that's received that award and then done anything? I wonder. There is a small list of notable selections who have gone on to not just not be cut from the team, but to go on to play. Um, Let's see. I'm going to just read these down and you tell me when and if you recognize any of these because you're more familiar. Sounds good. Um, although a lot of these are kind of older, so it may take a few entries. Uh, Tyrone McGriff. Nope. Uh, Pittsburgh Steeler. Last pick the 12th round in 1980. Yep, that's it. He just played a little bit. Um, John Tuggle. Never heard of him. 1983, so I doubt that you would have. Marty Moore. Nope. He became the first Mr. Irrelevant, Irrelevant to play in a Super Bowl. With the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 31. Hmm. So he gets that. Uh, Mike Green. Can't say I know it. Name sounds familiar, but I don't know. He was part of the Chicago Bears secondary in the 2000s. Played from 2000 to 2008. Okay. Um, Jim Finn. Nope. He was a fullback on the New York Giants. Uh, he was the second person to get a Super Bowl that year that they beat the Patriots. Patriots. Huh. Um, David Vobora. Nope, not a clue. Starting linebacker from the for the St. Louis Rams, two thousand nine. Wow. Uh, Ryan Sukop. 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 That, that sounds familiar. He became the starting kicker for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Has the he tied the record for the highest field goal percentage by a rookie. So it looks like he's actually been doing pretty good. He uh, plays with the Buccaneers now. Yeah, I was going to say, I know he's still playing. Yeah. Him, I, him and, I knew. And then Chad Kelly. Chad Kelly? Chad Kelly. Can you put this one together? Is it Jim Kelly's? It is. It's Jim Kelly's son. <laughs> Nephew. He, sorry. He's in the NFL? He is not in the NFL. <laughs> so he got drafted last and then didn't go in the NFL. Yes. Got caught. He, he was the quarterback for Ole Miss. Um, mm. He got drafted. He got drafted last largely because of injury and discipline questions. Um, he got drafted to the Denver Broncos, made it to second string quarterback, and then he was released. Oh, oh. Uh, he later signed with the Indianapolis Colts. I don't see any history past that, but now he plays for the Toronto team in the C- CFL. Well, good for him. At least he's still doing yeah. something. Good for him. He's got a legacy to live up to. Yep. But that's it. Like maybe there's, maybe there's he could make it to four CFL bowls and not win any. Ooh, that would be something. A little, nice little. <laughs> that would be a terrible legacy to, 
to live, to live up to. <laughs> yeah, he could have uh, not score wood uh, miss a field goal in the end. <laughs> not score wood. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Um, the next one that I have, the next, um, award that I have, this one isn't actually an award. It's more like an ironic award. Um, the Herman Cain award. Are you familiar with this little thing? I am not. Okay. Herman Cain was a senator, former presidential candidate who was really involved in denying COVID. Oh, Um, and then he died from COVID. (laughs) <laughs> damn so yeah they they named this award after him um specifically because one month after he died his twitter account tweeted this one it looks like the virus is not as deadly as mainstream media first made it out to be <laughs> after he to died which, they tweeted out yeah 30 days after he died somebody <laughs> tweeted that out on his account and someone <laughs> replies sir the virus killed you. You died from it. <laughs> and then this award was named after him. Um, it started sort of highlighting public figures who were publicly denouncing COVID as like an actual threat and then would contract COVID uh, and almost or actually die from it. Um, now it's it's a subreddit, but now it's sort of morphed into people finding just Facebook people who love to post about how COVID's a hoax and can't actually die from it. It was just made up and then they die from it. Um, (laughs) It's a very morbid thing. Um, But also like you get a little bit of schadenfreude out of it, even though people actually die. Like I don't really care for this phenomenon because people actually die and it's actually tragic. That people have been taken by the misinformation so hard that they actually die from it. But yeah, um, it's interesting. And I feel like in a few cases, this has actually demonstrated to people how harmful some of the misinformation has been. Yeah. I mean, especially in that case, that's quite. Yep. Quite. Uh, uh, I'll uh, move on pretty quick in order to keep it from, you know, <laughs> going, down a, going down going a down a sad political road. road. Yeah. 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 Um, and I'll move on to maybe not as sad. I feel like this Herman Cain Award sort of plays into the Darwin Awards. I'm sure you're familiar with the Darwin Awards, right? Nope. No. Okay, these have been around for a little while as sort of like a internet phenomenon. Um, people who just sort of do stupid shit oh. and then die because of it. Oh, okay. um, that's how you win the award, by dying. So you, ha- you have to be dead. You have to be dead in order to win the award. So it's like, do you get an actual award? Does like your family no. have to accept it? <laughs> no, this is just people talking about stupid people on the internet. Oh, so they're um, just inter- internet awards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll run down a few, uh, three from the past two years um, that have sur- that sort of sparked my interest. A lot of these are, are kind of like actually tragic, um, but these ones kind of really highlight how stupid people can be. Uh, The first one that I have is in California. These two people on some California highway in the middle of the night get into an accident and stop, apparently, in the middle of the road on a California highway, get out of their respective cars and start arguing with each other. (laughs) In the middle of the highway. In the middle of the highway. You see where this is going? Yeah, they got hit by something. They got hit by another car. Oh, boy. Yeah. So that's what happened. It was apparently at 1.30 a.m. in the morning. And so like. So those two people hit each other, got out and argued, and then they both got hit by somebody, a third party bystander and died. Wow. Yes. Which is like, apparently this third person who is in a Mini Cooper, like just, they swerved. Okay, here it is. They swerved to avoid one of the other cars that was stopped in the middle of the lane. And in swerving to avoid the car, they hit the two people. Oh, man. Yeah. I feel so, bad for the person that hit him and killed him. Yeah, that's exactly the point that this person makes. There's apparently one person that writes up the articles for the Darwin Awards. Like, people, yeah. um, like, submit submissions. I guess that's what you do with submissions is you submit them. Yeah. Uh, but then this one person, like, writes them up. Anyway, um, that was 2021. Okay. One of the ones in 2022 that caught my attention, was in Italy. 
apparently there was a small town and a uh, small town of Catalica. And there was one dude who was just a troublemaker in the town, you know? Mm-hmm. And he was known to just like break into places. And one day he breaks into a market in the middle of the night, just hanging around, taking this, taking that. Got tired, stopped, uh, saw this tower of bottled water cases, and was like, I'm a little thirsty. And he took a bottle of water out of the middle of the tower, and then got crushed by the tower of bottled water. <laughs> no. Yeah, man. How much bottled water does it take to this, crush somebody? <laughs> I don't know. This doesn't say, but it does. This says that the next morning, Workers got in, saw this collapsed tower of bottled water, started clearing it out, and then found the body. So it apparently was enough bottled water to cover a body. (laughs) Even that, like, for it to crush you and kill you. Also, why are they building a tower of bottled water? That's that big. You know? Well, I'm assuming it had to be cases of water. Uh, yeah, this this also doesn't specify and doesn't link to an actual news article, so I don't actually know. Um, but someone did comment that uh, it was the perfect thirst trap. <laughs> oh, we love a good pun. Yep. The last one that um, I wanted to highlight is really dumb. Like, this one's really dumb. Apparently, um, Russian soldier is uh hanging out you know doing his thing in the ukraine just like whatever he's wearing his armor his his bulletproof armor and he invades this house sees a nice macbook and says huh i want that but i don't really have any place to put it because well i got this nice vest on he takes the plate out of his bulletproof vest puts the macbook in the bulletproof vest where the bulletproof plate is supposed to be and uh then <laughs> Goes on oh. to get shot by Ukrainian soldiers. <laughs> oh, and apparently, that's... apparently MacBooks aren't bulletproof. Oh, that's just too perfect. Weird. I don't know. But yeah, that one's a little poetic justice because fucking, I don't know, don't be there. <laughs> Stop fucking being an asshole. <laughs> yep. That's that's quite good. Um. So with that, now is my a question that I have for you. Um. Can you think of anything like this, a sort of ironic award, a Mr. Irrelevant or a Darwin Award that you would like to give out to people? Just Mm. like people that you see in everyday life doing kind of silly stuff that you would love to just like. My answer for this is um, it's not exactly an award, but I've seen sites that sell bumper stickers that are like, I'm terrible at parking. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go and you can just slap those bumper stickers on people who have double, triple parked. So mine would probably be, and actually this is a pretty funny TikTok uh, trend, but people that don't put their cards back. Oh, yeah. I would. Have you seen the TikToks for that? There's like, there's like people that go around <laughs> and he just has stickers that say like, I'm a lazy bones and I don't put my cart yeah. back. And he throws them on their car. <laughs> yep. I would people get real that. mad. I know. I have in the past year seen an article or something, some argument that says that the shopping cart is the perfect example of how well a person can self govern. Right. That's true. Uh, because like there's, there's like nothing's no. probably probably nothing's going to get hurt if you don't do it but everybody knows that it's the wrong thing to do to not return it yep. so do can you self-govern do the right thing and bring your cart back or are you a lazy bones who's just gonna leave yeah. it oh no i bring mine back every time absolutely if i'm not close enough to a car corral i bring it back up to the store yeah i bring other people's carts back a lot of the time Ooh, that's one step beyond um i feel like i don't see a whole lot of carts Oh, Walmart left out in the middle is, of a parking lot. Well, yeah, I guess I, I don't go to Walmart all that much. I, I mostly go to like Wegmans and Tops. Yeah, but Wegmans that's for like high class people. That's not true. In comparison, yes, it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. There's no, there's very few. Uh, Wegmans is the Publix of the North. 
Okay. Like it's just more higher end. Good and stuff. I can't... They have qual they have quality sandwiches, quality like everything there. Yeah. It's a little yeah. more pricey in some sense, but it's so worth it. Uh I don't know. I but I have a different perspective on how pricey grocery stores can be. Um because as a worker at a grocery store, like they had a I worked at Hannaford uh in Utica. And they had a little, I don't know, seminar about how pricing works. Like some some places mark everything up and then have deep discounts. And some places just charge, like they have not as good as sales. Yeah. But if you're not shopping for sales specifically, it's better prices overall. Yeah. And I feel like looking at one way or the other, like unless you're Walmart, then every every place is basically the same. Yeah. And Walmart gets away for, with it by, you know. Um, not paying for health insurance for their employees. Yep. But they're not full time. We don't have to do that. <laughs> and we won't give you full time. Yep. Um, so let's move on to the awards that inspired this topic. Okay. The golden raspberries. You know about these at least, right? Yes. These the are Razzies. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's basically the flip side to the Oscars. It is awarding the worst movies of the year. Um, it's actually kind of interesting to me because it's not necessarily the worst movies of the year, right? Because they can just go to like college campuses and grab student films and name those the worst movies of the year. These are like the worst A-list movies of the year. Uh, so I don't know. I was kind of going to go through a few recent years and say like what the worst movies have been. Yeah. Um, I think I might do that. I'm just going to name what the worst picture was, I think, and then okay. go on to one of the other categories because that is uh, probably the funniest, most funny written category. Okay. Uh, the worst movie, I'm going to go ahead and go back to 38th, which was 2018. So I guess these were for 2017. Okay. Uh, the worst picture in 2017. How about I give you the nominees? You guess which one won. Okay. Okay. Nominees, The Emoji Movie, Baywatch, Fifty Shades Darker, The Mummy, Air Transformers, The Last Night. Mm. Mm. What was the second option? Baywatch. Yeah, I'm going to go with Baywatch. Nope, The no? Emoji Movie. Huh. See, I thought yeah, that the, was too obvious. No, 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 no. The Emoji Movie won. But I will say that Dwayne Johnson did attend the Razzies this year. Um on behalf of Baywatch the movie. Mm. Uh, that's Rock the Dwayne Johnson for anybody who doesn't know him by name. Um, the funniest category, though. <laughs> I don't even I don't know if you did what you just did on purpose or if you did it on accident. I always do it on purpose. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> Rock the Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. That's what he is to me. Um, but going through the like the like special categories have been the most interesting to read. Yeah. Um, specifically the, the recurring category they have every year is worst screen combo. Okay. Now uh, this is the worst thing where two, I guess, entities have interacted on screen. Um, okay. the winner this year was any two emojis, so any two emojis that interacted on screen together. Yeah. Cause it's the emoji movie. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other nominees though, from Fifty Shades Darker was any combination of two characters, two sex toys, or two sexual positions. Uh, from Transformers, it's any combination of two humans, two robots, or two explosions. And oh, so there's a lot of those. Pirates, of, yeah, in Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, it is Johnny Depp and his worn out drunk routine. <laughs> and. In Boo 2, A Medea Halloween, it is Tyler Perry and either the ratty old dressed or the worn out wig. <laughs> this is the best category every year. Just the nominees of it. Yeah. That's... So let's go ahead. And oh, I also wanted to point out like multiple winners or nominees, because this is sort of telling a lot of times. OK, uh, the highest nominees for this year were transformers the last night um 50 shades darker and the mummy which mm. is kind of telling because the winner 
because like many of those didn't win. The Emoji Movie took four awards this year. <laughs> <laughs> like they won almost every category they were nominated for. It's just fucking bad. You know, it's wild. Funny. Um, but we will move on to the 2018 awards or the awards for 2018. Um, I'll give you the worst picture nominees. You can guess. We have okay. Holmes and Watson, Gotti, The Happy Time Murders, Robin Hood, and Winchester. Mm-hmm. I know half of these, I think. Mm. Gotti? No, it's Holmes and Watson, apparently. Oh, huh, that's surprising. I know, right? I wouldn't think that, that would get blamed I mean, like that. Yeah, it's Will Ferrell and Adam McKay. Like, Adam McKay won an Oscar, like, maybe a couple years before this. Yeah. But yeah. They got they got roasted, and now I will stop reading them to you in the order that they are presented to me because uh, twice now I've read the f- the winner as the first one. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and this year the worst screen combos. This I am just going to read down the list. Uh, so winner first, okay. uh, D- Donald Trump and his quote self perpetuating pettiness end quote. In Death of a Nation and Fahrenheit 11.9. Uh, those were two just, I guess, documentaries okay. about the election. Um, next is any two actors or puppets from the Happy Time Murders. Apparently it's a puppet movie. Uh, Sherlock Gnomes. <laughs> Johnny Depp and his fast-fading film career. <laughs> and then these are really bad. These are really scathing when they don't have a joke to write in worst screen combo, because the last two nomina- nominations are Will Ferrell and John C. Riley and Kelly Preston and John Travolta in <laughs> Holmes and Watson and Gotti respectively. Oh. Yeah. Skating. Let's mm. see. Do we have a, we don't have a special award this year, but I will say that Gotti happy time murders and Holmes and Watson were all nominated for six awards this year. Oh man. Brutal. Yeah. I would say so. I actually haven't seen Holmes and Watson, but I do want to watch it. I want to watch it too. I kind of want to watch it more. Yeah. Now. Well, because there's a lot of people that like hated Anchorman when it first came out too. Is that true? Yeah. There's a ton of people that didn't like it. I mean, comedy movies aren't like you critically acclaimed usually. Yeah. But I don't know. Let's see. So 2019 nominations. We have a Medea family funeral. The Phonetic, The Haunting of Sharon Tate, Cats, and Rambo Last Blood, which won one this year. Mm. Do you know what all these movies are? Nope. (laughs) I don't know what The Phonetic is, but other than that, I kind of know what everything else is. I am so far behind on movies. (laughs) That's fine. Hmm. Go with Fanatic. Nah, it's Cats. This one should have been an easy one for you. But I like Cats. No, the movie, Josh. No, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but it has cats in it. Does it though? I don't know. But it, they, they took had, their name. They had they had like realistic cat buttholes in the first cut of the film. <laughs> you say realistic cat buttholes? Yes. Oh. They re-edited it. How does at- how does one get a realistic cat butthole? <laughs> Um, YouTuber William Osman sells a hat with a cat butthole embroidered on it. Oh, did he like silicone so, mold a cat ass to get it? Nah, he probably just took a picture of his cat's butthole and then embroidered it on a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that next time I come to your house without you knowing. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture of every one of your cat's buttholes. No. And get, and get, him, in, and get him embroidered on a t-shirt for you. <laughs> Dude. You can't. Mm, okay, fine. <laughs> I can only imagine the reaction if you open the box when it's just a shirt with five cat what? assholes on it. What is the? Oh, that was Jazzy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this year, I would literally I will... just. I would just put. Above Jazzy's butthole, it would just be two glowing eyes. So, that's that doesn't make sense. That she would be, she would have to be like completely bent in half. Like it would be, it would be weird. Um. Anyway, I will read you a few other nominations this year. Okay. Um. Other than worst screen combo. Now yeah. you will remember 
that a Medea family funeral was nominated for worst picture, right? Yeah. Nominee for worst actress, Tyler Perry. Okay. In as Medea, um, in Medea's family funeral. Worst supporting actor nominee, Joe from a Medea family funeral, played by Tyler Perry. And <laughs> Uncle Heathrow in played a Medea Tyler family Perry. funeral, played by Tyler Perry. <laughs> <laughs> my man <laughs> so, got roasted. Yeah, he got nominated four times in three categories <laughs> and then worst screen combo tyler perry and tyler perry or tyler perry in a medea family funeral <laughs> so then he got nominated two three more times in worst screen combo oh man but the winner was any half feline half human in cats <laughs> Um, also nominated from Cats was Jason Derulo and his CGI neutered bulge. <laughs> um, and John Travolta and any screenplay he accepts are the worst screen combos of this year. Nominees. <laughs> and with that, oh, who got nominated most this year? I'll, it's Cats. It's Cats. Cats and Medea got nominated most this year. Apparently they fucking suck. I mean, to be fair, I could tell you that. But I don't know if I've ever seen we'll it. We'll go ahead like and Tyler Perry move on. movie that I like. Still there, Josh? I haven't heard from you in a second. Yeah. Can you not hear me? Yeah. Uh I, I didn't realize I accidentally muted myself on the call, cool. but I, I've been here the whole time, sir. That's great to know. <laughs> It'll be fun to see how that comes through in the recording. <laughs> oh, the recording will be fine. Cool. Um, okay. 2020, we have, oh boy, I don't know most of these. Worst picture, Fa- Fantasy Island, Doolittle, 365 Days, Music, or Absolute Proof? Hmm. I'm going to go with Doolittle. No. No? No. Do you know any of the rest of these films? No. <laughs> okay. Me neither. I just assumed um, since Doolittle was uh probably a poor sequel. Mm-hmm. Then it was probably not good. Yeah, I mean, it was nominated. Music um, was the movie that was directed by Sia. Okay. Do you remember this one? Nope. Where um, she got, like, roasted for portraying, fuck, was it autism? Like, wicked bad? No, I didn't see anything on that. Yeah. I remember the controversy. I don't remember exactly what the controversy was about. Um. Let's see. Fantasy Island, directed by Jason Bloom. So I'm assuming that was a horror movie. Um, I don't know what 365 Days was. Anyway, Absolute Proof, one worst picture. And in order to demonstrate why, um, Absolute Proof also won best or worst actor. Um, playing himself, Mike <laughs> Lindell. <laughs> Do you know who Mike Lindell is? No. He's the my pillow guy. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, fuck yep. that guy. Yep. Ugh. Um. So that's why you know it. It was absolute proof was produced by One American News Network. Also, so just yeah, really, really showing you its cards right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, worst screen combo this year was Rudy Giuliani and his pants zipper in <laughs> Borat's subsequent movie film. <laughs> Because oh, that's good. That was fucking wild. <laughs> um, nominees were Robert Downey Jr. and his utterly unconvincing Welsh accent from Doolittle, um, Harrison Ford and the totally fake looking CGI quote unquote dog in Call of the Wild. A good roast. Anytime there's just two people, it's a roast. Lauren Lapkus and David Spade in The Wrong Missy. Uh, and in Hubie Halloween, Adam Sandler in his grating simpleton voice. Yeah, it was definitely wasn't one of his stronger movies, but I still laughed at it. Yeah. I don't know mm. if you watched it's, it. <clears throat> no, I haven't, but it ha- it wasn't nominated for anything else. Oh, no, yeah. he was nominated for Worst Actor, but whatever. Um, This year, the most nominations went to 365 Days and Doolittle. What is 365 Days? This I don't know. Is it it's year? an sure. erotic it's an erotic thriller film based on a novel of trilogy, a trilogy, trilogy of novels, whatever. Um, relationship falling for what? A young Warsaw woman in a spiritless relationship falling for a dominant Sicilian man who imprisons and imposes her a period of 365 days 
for which to fall in love with him. Huh. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Apparently not, because it has yeah. a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, wow, a zero. That's bad. Brutal. Okay. <laughs> Either that or nobody watched it. <laughs> Yeah, right. No, <laughs> actually, now I do remember this movie. I re- I remember a couple like YouTube movie commentators like just roasting the shit out of the movie. It was good yeah. entertainment to see that at least. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And now the most recent awards: worst picture nominees: uh, The Woman in the Window, Space Jam, Karen, Infinite, and Diana the Musical. Huh. Hmm. I hope yeah. it's not Space Jam. I mean, Space I have, Jam, I, a new I, legacy. I mean, I haven't seen it, but I don't see how it could be that bad. Sounded pretty bad. Hmm. But I'll give you a hint. It's not Space Jam. I'm going to go with Diana the Musical. That's correct. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. That just sounds t- terrible. <laughs> yeah, man. They wrote some pretty wick- wicked shit about this uh, because down on worst screen combo. Um, any klutzy cast member and any lamely lyricized or choreographed musical number. This was nominated as worst screen screen combo. Hmm. But who won as worst screen combo was LeBron James. And any <laughs> Warner cartoon character or Time Warner product he dribbles on. <laughs> that I can <laughs> see. Yeah. Also nominated was Jared Leto and... Either his 17-pound latex face, his geeky clothes, or his ridiculous accent in The House of Gucci, which is on my list to watch for Bad Movie Night. I didn't know you had Bad Movie Night. uh, I mean, we don't very often, but House of Gucci's on it because (laughs) it sounds... He's he's like, I'm making it a thing because I want to watch this. No, we did it a couple times before. We watched um, Birdemic and Deathbed. The Bed That Eats. Oh, those well, were that good. sounds like an interesting movie. Yeah, it's about a bed that eats. Is it worse than Kingdom of Spiders? I don't know that one, but oh. probably. You should watch that and then tell me. You should watch Deathbed, The Bed That Eats. It's on Plex. Uh, I don't um, I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you I'll watch it, but I probably won't. Or Birdemic. Or The Velocipaster. <laughs> the Velocipaster was actually pretty fun. Um, okay, that leads us up to the modern day, but... There are, what do they call these? Special categories in the Razzies. Okay. These ones are pretty fun, except for the most recent one, which I will get out of the way first. Because in 2021, they made a category called Worst Worst Bruce Willis Performance in a 2021 Movie. (laughs) Um, And they nominated seven movies because he was in eight. Um, (laughs) They were like, you sucked in all but one. Yeah, basically. And then... Uh, Bruce Willis, his family came out with his diagnosis that he has aphasia. Yeah. Um, and they were like, yeah, we're going to rescind that award. We're sorry, Bruce Willis. <laughs> well, at least they did that. So that was nice of them. These people are like, they have a conscience, but yeah. they love roasting people. Um, 2019, though, they introduced a category called the worst reckless disregard for human life and public property oh because in that year um joker hellboy the haunting of sharon tate dragged across concrete and rambo last blood all released just wanton destruction oh, rambo won that makes sense yeah 2017 showed us the Razzie nominee so rotten you loved it this is the year that we started with so Mm-hmm. All the notable movies from that year. Transformers The Last Night, The Mummy, Fifty Shades Darker, The Emoji Movie, and lastly, the winner, Baywatch. The Razzie <laughs> nominee, so rotten you loved it. And uh, now that I'm thinking about it, this is the award that Rock the Dwayne Johnson uh, attended in order to receive it. I mean, I can get I can get behind that. Like, I watched yeah. Baywatch, and like, was it a good movie? No. Did I enjoy myself? Yeah. Hell Yeah. <laughs> Um, some notable special categories from the past. Um, uh, the most flatulent teen targeted movie. Jackass the movie. <laughs> uh, the worst excuse for an actual movie. All concept, no concept. The cat in the hat. 
Oh, but also Too Fast, Too Furious was nominated that for that. So I don't know. Hmm, that's kind of surprising. Oh, the worst dis the uh worst reckless disregard is not a new category. In 1997, worst reckless disregard for human life and public property won by Con Air. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually funny that you bring that up because today there's been pictures going around of Aaron Rodgers going to the first Green Bay practice and he's wearing a, a white beat up like wife beater tank top with this long hair and he looks just like Nicolas Cage and Con Air. That's amazing. I'm going to need to look up this picture when I find a minute. I'm sending it to you right now. OK, do that because I'm going to move on. Um, these are ones that I love. The Ig Nobel Prize. Um, you are familiar with the Nobel Prize, right? Yep. And you are you familiar with the word Ig Nobel? No. <laughs> <laughs> it is basically the opposite of noble, right? Okay. But it's Nobel, so these are the Ig Nobel Prizes. Okay. Um, I thought that's what it might be, but I wasn't yes. sure, so I was like, well, you know. Um, these are actually very interesting. Sometimes they're satirical, where like they're making fun of something that happened like what which one was it where they awarded um volkswagen ah fuck yeah that's (laughs) that's nick cage my man (laughs) right looks just like him he had to do that on purpose right i don't know i hope so (laughs) that had to be on purpose aaron Rodgers doesn't own a wife beater like that i mean he might he's yeah i guess he does play in green bay there's not a whole lot else to do about <laughs> other than shop for wife beaters shop for wife beaters eat cheese and be cold yeah yeah um okay here we go 2016 for chemistry the ig nobel awards awarded volkswagen for solving the problem of excessive automobile po- automobile pollution emissions by automatically electromechanically producing fewer emissions whenever cars are being tested you recall that 2016 was the year that volkswagen got caught cheating emissions results for their turbo diesels yep so they can be um sort of grading like that to point out stuff like that or they can just be kind of funny um for example 2011 psychology award was awarded to carl tegan in norway for trying to understand why in everyday life people sigh Hmm. that's kind of the gamut um, because when it's like that those are real studies (laughs) why would anyone do that (sighs) (sighs) um But yeah, I was just going to sort of run down the most recent winners. Um, These seem to be awarded in September. There are actual ceremonies hosted for these awards. The writer, the authors of the paper are notified that they are being considered and are invited to attend. And most of them do uh, because they actually are real studies. (laughs) Uh, So I'm going to go ahead and run down the most recent awards. You stop me um, whenever you have something to say. All righty. In biology, um, I'm not going to read everybody because they're mostly names that I would butcher because I am an ignorant American. Um, but um, analyzing in biology, analyzing variations of purring, chirping, chattering, trilling, tweedling, murmuring, meowing, moaning, squeaking, hissing, yowling, growling, growling, and other modes of cat and human communication this person actually studied what cat noises mean and how people reproduce these cat noises back to cats and what they mean Hmm. i need to watch this yeah it's a real well you can't watch it because it's a study you can read the research paper i need to read the research paper okay well um what is the site i had the site open but um yeah i mean they they have a site if you just search ig nobel prize ig space nobel prize um they have a pretty good site where they actually link to the research papers so i would uh recommend if anybody's interested in any of these go ahead and go there and if you don't want to pay for the research journals you can 
email the researchers directly and they'll usually send it to you for free. If you're really interested in reading whatever, like a 20 page research paper on uh, purring, chirping, chattering, trilling, tweedling, murmuring, meowing, moaning, squeaking, hissing, yelling, growling, growling, you know, you can do that. Um, in ecology, I'm more, though, I'm more impressed that you got through that twice. <laughs> in ecology this year, they awarded um, the use of genetic analysis to identify the different species of bacteria that reside in wads of discarded chewing gum stuck on pavements in various countries. Oh. Mm -hmm. Go to France, pick up some chewing gum, analyze the bacteria. Go to Norway, pick up some chewing gum, analyze the bacteria. How's it different? <laughs> in chemistry, uh, these researchers chemically analyzed the air inside movie theaters to test whether odors produced by the audience are a reliable indicator of the levels of violence, sex, antisocial behavior, drug use, or profanity in the movie the audience is watching. Then. So do people smell different if they're witnessing drug use or violence? Oh. <laughs> well then. <laughs> this is what I mean. Like, they're very interesting. Um, let's see. We have economics. This one actually is sounds interesting. Pavlo Bavlatsi uh, discovered that in post-Soviet countries, you can accurately link a country's, uh, the obesity of a country's leading politicians to that country's corruption. So the fatter they are, the, in, <laughs> the more yeah, corrupt in, they are? Yep. In post-Soviet countries, the fatter <laughs> politicians are, the uh, more corrupt they are. Okay. Think like, um, I can't remember his name right now, but think the president of Romania versus the president of Ukraine, right? Yeah. That's the sort of a notable example these days. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. In medicine, uh, they demonstrated that sexual orgasms can be as effective as decongestive can be as effective as decongestant medicines. Huh. So, so you so you just come your cold away. <laughs> yes, come your cold away. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Nyquil needs to change there. So, or uh, wait, <laughs> and then you just go go rub one out. KY, KY Jelly just needs to change their slogan. <laughs> <laughs> KY Unplug Jelly. your nose. Come no, your not cold that away. Way. Come your cold away. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna make a fake ad for KY Jelly and change the <laughs> slogan Perfect. to "Come your cold away." <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Instead of snot running out of your nose. <laughs> a nose pie. The, the, the tissues just get stuck to your nose in a weird way. <laughs> you look like you have a Santa Claus beard by the end of the... <laughs> from all the tissues just stuck to your face. <laughs> yep 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 oh man <laughs> all right i'm um, sorry for painting that picture but it was too good not to share nah you good you good everybody was thinking it you just said it yeah um <laughs> in peace um these researchers won for testing the hypothesis that humans evolved beards to protect themselves from punches to the face i mean i believe it why we have good beards um i i had the abstract to this paper pulled up and i don't know why i closed it but um yes that's exactly it that's exactly why we have beards yeah um just like lion's manes protect them from like uh, attacks to the neck that's exactly what <laughs> beards do like they noticed a significant reduction a statistically significant reduction in force applied to a fake jaw <laughs> when it was haired versus when it was plucked. Well, yeah, because the person's like, where's their jawline? Where's it begin? <laughs> well, it's not even that. It's actually, they, because they tested this. It's just the by, dampening power of the hair? Yes, exactly. They Hell, tested yeah. it by making a, a model of a jaw, lining it with sheepskin and a layer of synthetic fat, and then either putting fur on it or not putting fur on it, or putting fur on it and then plucking it in order to 
minimize variables, but whatever. So what you're telling me is the guys from ZZ Top would be the best boxers because they just flip their beard up and go to war. Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I was what I'm saying is that dwarfs from the Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. with their big long beards and their big braided long beards would absorb more punishment than non-bearded dwarves. Huh. Beards for the win. Yeah, for real. Uh, but that was interesting. The yeah, next so. two are funny. Um, in physics, these researchers conducted experiments to learn why pedestrians do not constantly com- collide with other pedestrians. And in kinetics, these Japanese researchers conducted experiments to learn how mutual anticipation can contribute to self-organization in crowds, which means that they studied why people don't bump into each other. Mm. So in physics, these people were studying why people do bump into each other. In kinetics, (laughs) they were studying why they don't bump into each other. (laughs) (laughs) Which is funny. It's a funny sort of pairing of studies. That is is good. All in the same year. Mm. Um, In entomology, which is study of bugs, uh, these people researched or this this just has the study's name the name of the study is a new method of cockroach control on submarines is it they're studying how to how to control cockroaches on submarines <laughs> got a little maybe, remote control with the co- attached to a cockroach maybe maybe we send this study to matt <laughs> yeah matt see if he of, understands it do you understand how this functions yeah okay in transportation this these these researchers um were awarded for determining by experiment whether it's safer to transport an airborne rhinoceros upside down. Oh, you no, know, I always like to keep my rhinoceroses upside down. That's what I'm saying, my man. Okay, hold on. Pulmonary... So something about a right side up rhinoceros that just doesn't make sense to me. The pulmonary and metabolic effects of suspension by the feet compared with lateral recumbency in immobilized black rhinoceroses captured by aerial darting. Mm. Ooh, boy. Aerial translocation of captured black rhinoceroses has been accomplished by suspending them by their feet. Okay, cool. Anyway, that was all the awards for 2021. Quite some interesting ones in there. Yeah. I am going to send you this wikipedia link okay um you can sort of browse through that see if there's any that catch your eye um but i have a couple in the meantime to sort of highlight um i looked through these a little bit before um they can be a little tough to read through so i picked a couple out um 2015 the the physics in 2015 award was awarded to patricia yang david Hu. Jonathan Pham, Jerome Chu, for testing the biological principle that nearly all mammals empty their bladders in about 21 seconds. Huh. I remember reading this and like they actually did test how long it takes various mammals to empty their bladders. And why is it almost always 21 seconds? I definitely can empty my bladder way faster than that. You can, but naturally, if you just sort of let it flow 20, 21 seconds about i don't know i was just talking to somebody about this the other day and my shit's like a fucking cnc laser cutter <laughs> <laughs> you got a my, strong stream my psi is through the fucking roof i have to stand backwards from the urinal so i don't spray <laughs> myself <laughs> you just gotta find you just gotta find that right angle what angle do you have to hit the porcelain at in order to make the the pee go into the bowl and not splash back? Oh, God. I'm sure that's been one of these awards. I ain't got Would, time to figure out the angle hey, of trajectory. I've been, I've been meaning to ask someone this question recently. Do you feel like if you're peeing into a toilet bowl, uh huh, is there less splash if you hit the porcelain or if you hit the water? Huh. Um. Like I think the um, water. Yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, that's what I've been thinking. Because like, if you're naturally being like onto the spot that is you is easy to well, hit, wa- like you're yeah, being well, like water, a back. Water can move. Yeah, the porcelain doesn't give at yep. all. It just bounces. Just bounces around. <clears throat> yeah. All right. 
I'm glad, glad we, because uh, I, I was starting to think the same thing, but then I'm like, but how is that possible? I could like angle it, and I've been trying to find the right angle to pee into the porcelain <laughs> to splash right? the lease. Oh, didn't that? I mean, I don't know. the worst for me is when they get into a like a stall or something, and it's too small, and like the like. I'm trying to stand there to piss and the door is literally on my back. And I'm like, I can't go back any farther. I have to like push straight down. I'm peeing at a 90 degree angle. (laughs) Yep. Yep. (laughs) You're just like holding it straight down, like hoping for the best. My God, I hope I don't can piss down my pants right now. (laughs) Like, oh man. Yeah, that's tough. I actually brought that up the other day. I was talking to Mason. That was about a weird, weird way to torture people. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, imagine if they could figure out, well, maybe you don't, maybe you've never experienced this, but you ever experience when you go pee and there's just that little bit of piss stuck? Yeah. What yep. if you, what if they could recreate that feeling and use that feeling as like waterboarding? So like you just stick somebody in a room and they have that feeling until you stop it. <laughs> I feel like that would be horrible. Yeah. Because that, that is the most uncomfortable feeling in the world for me. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't like that. I feel like there is... Um, I feel like I've heard of like real black site torture methods that have to do with that. Like sticking something up pee holes. You know? <laughs> it's also it a gives fetish. me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. Well, that's not your fetish, apparently. No, definitely not. Okay. Have you been looking through any of these? Seen any uh, interesting ones? Um, I'm scanning, but I haven't found anything that yeah caught my it's eye. Kind of a, it's kind of a dense list. So the last one that I have to bring up, the thing that made me aware of this award as an award is the 2017 Physics Award by okay. Mark Antoine Fadin. Mm. Um, he studies fluid dynamics and he probed the question can a cat be both a solid and a liquid what the fuck <laughs> it's a real research paper because Ow. cats are solid you know you you like can only compress them so much or whatever but uh they also will the definition of a liquid is a physical substance that will conform to the vessel that it's in. Mm, okay. And cats <laughs> yeah, do cats that. Cats do that pretty well. Cats yeah. conform to the vessel that they're in. Small, yeah. big, doesn't matter. Cats will take it up. Yeah. So he proved. That is pretty good. Scientifically, that cats are a liquid in this. <laughs> Noodle, you're a liquid, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I found one. Okay. Medicine in 2019. Silvano Gallus for collecting evidence that pizza might protect against illness and death if the pizza is made and eaten in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Italian pizza's good for you. I've been fucking eating the wrong pizza my whole life. Yeah, man. Figure. You gotta order it from Italy. I know. Do you think Uber Eats delivers that far? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Well, maybe not since they got rid of their like COVID uh, things. <laughs> During COVID, you could you could order food from pretty far away. Yeah. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm seeing something interesting here. Fluid dynamics. Ruslan uh, Krechnitikov and Hans Meyer for studying the dynamics of liquid sloshing to learn what happens when a person person walks while carrying a cup of coffee. Hmm. All right, and. Uh, 2017 fluid dynamics. G. Wan Han for studying the dynamics of liquid sloshing to learn what happens when a person walks backwards carrying a <laughs> cup of coffee. Oh, okay. So five years apart, really. Uh, furthering the research. G. Wan Han is. All right. Um, the next sort of stop that i have on this tour of interesting or funny awards is um what's it called do we have a name for it oh god that noise stays in um the maroon log are you familiar with what the maroon log is josh nope not a clue that is our high school's yearbook wait what that's what our high school's yearbook is called yes the maroon log so i have (laughs) the maroon log from 2008 here 
<laughs> oh, you you dug it out? And uh, it's on my bookshelf. Ah. Um, and I have our superlatives page opened up. I don't even know where mine is, and I don't remember anything about it. Are you? Do you know what superlative you won in high school? <sighs> no. I, Take I a guess. It, I thought it was going to be eyes. No. But I seem to think that somebody else got that. Eyes uh, is Jalene, yeah. uh, Marshall Perry, and Javon. I don't remember. It should be what? obvious. Is it funny? I will tell you who you won this superlative with. Okay. You won it with Rocco and Nikki Covey. Artistic? Yes. Class artists. Okay. That you were a class artist. You do art now. Yeah, this is true. This makes sense. Full-time job. That does, that, that does kind of make sense. Um, what interested me, though, when I was looking through this is the last page of our superlatives. <laughs> oh, boy. Because these are the wacky ones, sort of. You should have uh, taken, should've, should've, should've taken a picture of them so I could see these so you could send them to me. <laughs> I can do that. So I can look at some of the other ones. I have Man, no idea when I was where looking mine is. At, I'm assuming it's got to be at my parents' house somewhere. When I was looking at these, they seemed inter- more interesting uh, earlier, honestly. But I will go ahead and take this picture, send it to you in Discord. Alrighty. <clears throat> oh, God. It's hard to take a picture of a book. <laughs> Trying to, like... Hold it open and take a picture, and you're like, "Yeah, man, how do I, how do I, I use only, hands? I only have so many hands, right? Okay, coming. Why, to why you. can't I be a heck and Tonka truck and have all those arms? Heck and Tonka truck. <laughs> why can't okay. I be a heck and Tonka truck and have arms? Um, to make it simple for my hands, I sent it to you in our DMs. Oh, sliding into the DMs now, are we? <laughs> sliding into your DMs. Okay. Um, I thought this was interesting because not all of them are like uh flattering. Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I, it's really surprising that like Matt and Amanda got those ones. The best personality, yeah. Yeah. Because they both are very like subdued and subtle personality yeah. people. They're not something that stands out. Frankly, best personality is just like I cannot see a way that this person could be annoying. Like or, <laughs> that's all it or, is. I don't know enough about them for them to be annoying. Yeah. Their personality must be good. Most likely to be famous, John Keeley. Love it. (laughs) Yeah, that is good. But the best one, I think, in the whole superlative section is Class Brain with Lauren and Jake there. Yeah. Uh, Because they look so fucking stupid and it's such a good joke. Yeah, it's very good. Jake Jake is holding his book upside down and Lauren is just writing a b c d e f yeah yeah that it's was really such, good it's such a good joke i gotta say i like <laughs> laughed out loud when i was looking through these and i was trying to pick like which ones to actually bring up that that one actually truly made me laugh yeah, that is a good one but uh yeah adam adams definitely makes sense yep adams is perfect he just smiles too much um let's see we also had uh this was like a class-wide joke we had class muscles, um, Hank Penry, Andrew Penry, and I Steph mean, Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> it was very good. It was a very good one. Yeah, that is pretty good. Um, class sleepers. Tony Zamilio, Lana, <laughs> Lana Hamlin, Henry Brunette, and Jeff Lawrence. It's so weird that Lana got grouped in though with them. Do you know who Jeff Lawrence is? Yeah. You do? Yeah. I don't. Short, skinny, uh, or not short, but like pretty skinny kid, pretty like close cut haircut. Um, Jeff Lawrence. I, I, can picture, I can picture his face. I cannot. I'm going to look him up. But my sense on that category <laughs> is basically like new kids. Yeah. Like that's, that's all it is. Jeff Lawrence. Yeah. I don't know him. Was he new? Because like. He's new-ish. Because like I think Tony, he came in like tenth grade maybe. Because like yeah, that makes sense to me. Because Tony and Lana and Henry were all oh, like new kids. Eighth grade. Yeah, they're all like eighth grades. Uh no, Lana came I think tenth grade because she rode Did my she? bus. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it was tenth grade. So, but yeah, that that's funny. I think Tony too came. No, came Tony there. came so, in seventh or eighth because he had Mister Grow with us. Mister Grow was seventh, ninth grade, seventh, ninth grade, Earth science. Yeah. Yeah, so ninth. So he, you know, he yeah. actually came in ninth, ninth grade. Anyway, um, that was just a funny little t- 
custom version <laughs> into our what did you get what did i get yeah because i can only see most, the one page obviously so i can't see what yeah most musical i got okay that makes uh, sense because it's because I was in band and jazz band and took music theory. And he played the tr- the trumpet. I played the trumpet. That's me. <laughs> Who did I get that with? I think it, I had to have gotten it with stuff. No? No. Me? Adrian Zacroli, who was only sense. in chorus, and Sean Bauer, who I don't remember playing an instrument. He did drums. Was he in a he was probably in a band? Yeah. But, yep, that's my cohorts. Mm. Um, which is extremely interesting to anybody from Frankfurt Schuyler who graduated in 2008 who's listening right now. <laughs> so no one. <laughs> us, literally just us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> anyway, I moving on, I found this other award. This is more of a contest. The Bulwer Lytton Fiction Contest. Okay. This is a contest for people to write the worst opening sentence to novels that don't exist. So how can good writers write the worst opening sentences? Oh. I sent you a link to 2020, um, and I'll pick out a couple good ones from 2021. While you're doing that, while you're sort of browsing those, uh, let's see the 2021 grand prize winner. These are single sentences. Imagine a book that starts like this. Okay. That's what I want you to do. A lecherous sunrise flaunted itself over a flatulent sea, ripping the obsidian bodice of night asunder with its rapacious fingers of gold, thus exposing her dusky bosom to the dawn's ogling stare. (laughs) They are literally just like, how many obscure words can I use in this? <laughs> kind of. They're like, but hey, a- she dumped them out in the front of the moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're very good. There's, there's winners. There's a grand prize winner, and then there's winners in each category, which is kind of interesting to look through. So let's see. Adventure. In 2021, when I asked our novice safari guide, Guy Pomeroy, to identify what that roaring sound was, he replied, and these were his last words, It sounds to me like someone with a bad case of bronchitis. I'll check and be right back. (laughs) This one has me laughing. Grand prize in 2020. Her dear Uh John missive flapped unambiguously in the wind, windy breeze, hanging like a pizza menu on the doorknob of my mind. (laughs) Oh, man. So romantic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. They're very good. His voice rang out sweet and loud like maple syrup that had achieved speech and wished to, wished to push its deeply held political beliefs on others. <laughs> Some of these are sort of like send ups of the genre that they're writing about. This one's good. As the large wild turkey soared over him. Propelled by the twin blast from David's shotgun, Michael gazed up at the cornbread-colored sky and thought, what a blessed day to be a Christian. (laughs) (laughs) What? I la- I was reading these earlier, just like laughing to myself like an oh, idiot. Oh, that one's good. Um, Hold on. You're on 2020? Yeah. I want you to go to Purple Prose uh, and read that one. I think that one's my favorite. Purple Prose. Okay. The biker gang roared into the parking lot of the bar and grill like a trooper of holler monkeys trying to lure mates. Gray beneath the tire or the gravel beneath the tires of their well oiled bikes crunched like the dill pickle spears. The place served alongside their famous tuna salad BLT <laughs> and Reuben sandwiches. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know why. That was so funny to me. Who's gravel, comparing gravel crunches to pickle spears? To dill pickle spears. Oh, and, then it, man. and then it turns into an ad for the bar and grill served yeah. alongside their Reuben sandwiches. And <laughs> BLTs and tuna salad. <laughs> Come on down to Dill's Bar and Grill. Oh, it's so good. 
where our pickles are as snappy as our parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are these are funny. Um, we'll sh- we'll put this in the uh, in the show notes too, so so people can browse them because they are these are some of the most fun that I've had. Just like browsing some oh, stuff. Oh, this one I gotta them. read. Okay, so this one is. Kathy Chapman, Canandaigua, New York. Ooh, local. (laughs) The rain fell in buckets as I walked the cobble streets of the old town. Although, I supposed, if rain really came in buckets, one might land on my head and knock me unconscious. So I'd much prefer rain in cats and dogs because I'm quite fond of cats. But better still, if we're hot enough to fry an egg on the pavement, I'm rather peckish. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay then yeah i am actually pretty hungry that's right that's right uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. Hmm. oh god they're so good yeah they are good um i have i have one that i that i like that i'm trying to find right now oh this is another this one's from allegheny new york the gentle rhythmic sound of water lapping at the metal hull of the boat transported Philip back to a simpler time of marshmallow campfires and magical summers at the lake until, upon awaking, he came to realize it was only the sound of Roomba vacuuming robot, which had short-circuited and was running repeatedly into the baseboard of his heat register. <laughs> <laughs> I like this category. It was uh, the category is dark and stormy. Uh And this is another one of my favorite ones. It was a dark and stormy night, explained Moscow weatherman Sergei Ivanovich Nabokov, or Sergei Ivanovich fondly called Suryashka or Suryashenka by his family. But don't bother memorizing that, as Sergei won't appear until it is won't appear again until the end of the book when his weather forecast is heard in the background as we learn that the main character, Alexei Dmitrievov Makarov, or Alexei Dmitrievich, or, as he's known, Alyshoka, or Alyoshka, or Alyoshenka, or simply Alexei M, has shockingly died. (laughs) Hey, here's all this stuff that you don't need to remember, but I'm putting it here anyway. This one, this is one of the ones that I was talking about. Sounds like a send up of a genre, yeah. like just introducing four or five characters' names, four or five names of a single character in the first sentence of the book. Why do you need to know it? Yeah, uh, that's but good. Yeah, they're very good. Um, and that finally led me to the literary review. This is a magazine. Uh, they, you know, publish who knows how often because it's a magazine could be monthly, could be bi-monthly, could be yearly. I don't care. Every year they do awards for, um, bad sex in fiction. Okay. So people who are really bad at writing sex scenes, (laughs) right? Uh, I will finish off my topic by just giving you excerpts from the co-winners of 2021 oh, this should be a good send off. 2019 co-winners okay. the first one is from the book pax uh it doesn't have immediately who wrote it john john harvey john harvey from the book pax she was burning hot and the heat was in him he looked down on her perfect black slenderness her eyes were ravenous Like his own, they were fire and desire, more than torrid, more than tropical. They, too, were riding the equator. They embraced as if, with violent holding, they could weld the two of them together. That was one excerpt, um, along with another one that I read somewhere else that described his penis as a white-hot rod of iron. Bam. And finally, my favorite excerpt from the three excerpts that I read from each of these books that they publish on their site yeah. here. Um, from The Office of Gardens and Ponds by Didier de Coin. Ketsuro moaned as a bulge formed beneath the material of his kimono. A bulge that Miyuki seized, needed, 
massaged, squashed, and crushed. With a fondling, Ketsuro's penis and testicles became one single mound that rolled around beneath the grip of her hand. Miyuki felt as though she was manipulating a small monkey that was curling up its paws. That's sex. That's how sex does. What in the absolute fuck? (laughs) That's not the most disturbing excerpt. The other excerpt that I read from this book was Miyuki here. Um, at some okay, at some point, apparently, Ketsuro dies. Spoilers, I guess. Um, and Miyuki is uh, identifying the body and needs a second alone with him, right? Yeah. To obviously put his penis in her mouth to make sure it's him. Um, I don't know to relive one last um hurrah of her remembering how he would put his penis in her mouth, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, man. Fucked up book. I don't, yeah. I don't give a shit, but it deserves this reward. Yeah. So that's awards. These are awards that you should really try to win, but don't because they suck. They're awful. <laughs> Except for the Ig Nobel Awards. You can actually win that with real, um, real work. Like, scientific research. Yeah. And that's fun. Liquid cats. Liquid cats. Solid or liquid? Like glass. Yeah, but I've seen lots of solid cats. I've never seen a liquid cat. I'm going to have to go find one. <laughs> I don't know. My cats turn into liquid quite a bit. Like when <laughs> Neo's bones just turn to noodles, like they just soak up all the all the liquid, turn to noodles, and then he's just like a sloshy little mess in my arms. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, a little loaf cat. Just a little loaf. No, not even a loaf. Because loaves are nice and firm, right? Like, you could squish them. But, like, Neo, when he turns into noodles, you just slosh around. <laughs> but that's all I had for awards. Um, is there anything else you wanted to address? Had you looked through any more ignobles or... No. Do you do you want to read a, an excerpt of Bad Sex? No, I think I'm, I'm solid on them. Those were good okay, enough. cool. That's a good choice. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I think that, that does it for my end. Cool. All right. And in that case, that'll do it for both of us. We still have to iron out a way to throw to outro. So hey, yeah. this is the end of the episode. That's what we're going to do. Throw to See outro. You next week. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Thank you and congratulations for making it to the end of this episode of Quirt on the Street. We have been your hosts, Vince and Josh. You can find us on our socials. You can find us on Twitter at Quirt on the Street, Q-U-O-R-D on the S-T. If you're listening to us on YouTube uh, slash Quirt on the Street, go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment. And wherever you're listening to us, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you can leave a review, please leave us a review. If you tell us what we can do worse, I promise I will read it on the podcast unless it's just too mean. If you have any need to contact us in a longer format, you can email us at quirtonthestreet at gmail.com or you can visit us on our website, quirtonthestreet.xyz. Feel free to leave us a voice message on there. If you want to reach out to us individually, you can get a hold of us at our personal Twitters. Mine is at I'm Scuzzy, I M S K U Z Z E Y. And I am at V underscore C, spell out the underscore. Uh, we would finally like to acknowledge the people that made this podcast happen uh, Josh Wardle, who is the original creator of Wordle. And Freddie Meyer, the creator of Quartal, who you can find on Twitter at Quartal. And with that, we will just ask you, as always, to get, get the, the court out. out.